China likes to blame other countries for spreading COVID. China claims it's the victim, despite covering it up, then sending it abroad. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Incogni. You probably know that companies are collecting your personal data, but you may not realize just how many. Dozens, maybe hundreds, most of which you've never heard of. You have no idea what they're doing with it. Incogni helps stop them. I'll explain more at the end. By now, most people know that COVID, or the Wuhan virus as it used to be called, is spread from China. The Chinese regime has, of course, tried to deny this, saying it possibly spread from Italy, or the U.S., or France, or frozen food. Thanks to the Chinese Communist Party, we may never know how the virus spread to humans. But one thing is clear. China is responsible for spreading it to the rest of the world. It's been a long pandemic, so let me just remind you of how this all started. Officials in China knew that a novel coronavirus was spreading for weeks before they did anything to stop it. But it wasn't just that they didn't do anything. It was also how they tried to cover it up over and over and over again. The government initially did this by silencing doctors who discovered the virus. Then journalists and anyone else who talked about a mysterious illness spreading in the city of Wuhan. By December 30th, 2019, Doctors were reporting a mysterious pneumonia-like virus that was spreading in Wuhan. Wuhan city officials had ordered local hospitals to report any cases. That same day, the news blew up on WeChat, China's version of Twitter. A few days later, China's National Health Commission told the commercial labs to destroy or hand over samples with the virus in order that research findings be published only after official approval. Yeah, there's the cover-up. China initially pushed the theory that COVID came from bats or pangolins and claimed the virus crossed from animals to humans at the Huanan wet market in Wuhan. We now know that's probably not what happened. By January 8th, the head of China's Center for Disease Control and Prevention told his U.S. counterpart the virus was jumping between humans. He didn't publicize that, though. It took almost two weeks after he said that for China to finally admit that people were passing it to other people. By that time, at least four cases had been confirmed overseas. Countries like Japan, Taiwan, and Thailand already had health checks in place for travelers from China. Now, despite being the epicenter of the virus, travel to and from Wuhan wasn't restricted until three days later, on January 23rd. The reason that's so significant is because that was just two days before the Lunar New Year. Lunar New Year in China is like Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's all wrapped in one. It's a big holiday, and most people spend it with family, which means lots of travel. The government waiting this long on travel restrictions means there were several weeks for the virus to spread. But anyone who watched how China covered up SARS in 2003 knows this is a feature, not a bug in the Communist Party system. In this system, people who report bad news often get held responsible. And so bad news just gets buried. So as COVID was spreading rapidly in late 2019 and early 2020, local officials were worried that if they reported this deadly new virus right around Lunar New Year, they would lose their jobs. Of course, if the problem gets too big and can't be contained, those same officials will still lose their jobs. Two Communist Party officials were sacked for their mishandling of the virus. But it wasn't just the local officials' fault. That's what the Chinese Communist Party wants people to believe, that the party leadership would have totally fixed everything if local officials hadn't kept them in the dark. But the truth is, the central government knew about the virus weeks earlier than we initially thought. It came out later that Chinese leader Xi Jinping spoke to officials about containing the virus at a Politburo Standing Committee meeting on January 7, 2020. Xi didn't publicly address the coronavirus until almost two weeks later, on January 20th. 
during those two weeks, Chinese officials were all still downplaying the virus. So it wasn't just the local government that screwed up. The top party leadership was involved in the cover-up. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, the Chinese Communist Party was actively lobbying the World Health Organization to not declare a global health emergency. China's ambassador made it clear that his country would view an emergency declaration as a vote of no confidence. China's lobbying paid off. The day the Wuhan travel restrictions were put in place, the WHO decided not to declare a global health emergency. While China was lobbying the WHO, it was also reportedly withholding key information about the virus. China sat on releasing the genetic map of the virus for more than a week after three different government labs had fully decoded the information. Government labs only released the genome after another lab published it on a virologist's website on January 11th. And even then, China stalled for at least two more weeks before giving the WHO more detailed info on patients. So China did its best to cover up COVID, both internally and to the rest of the world. But then it also called on countries to lift travel bans from China. China's foreign ministry said in mid-February that some countries had overreacted with their bans and that this caused unnecessary panic. The Chinese regime was especially upset about the U.S. travel ban. It said this was out of line with WHO guidance, which is true, the WHO wasn't recommending travel bans at the time, but it had declared COVID a public health emergency by this point. And considering how China was suppressing info about the virus, you can't blame countries for playing it safe rather than sorry. And at the same time China was protesting all these travel bans, it was also running propaganda taking credit for containing the coronavirus within its borders. China has contained more than 99% of the confirmed cases within its borders, which means less than 1% of the confirmed cases worldwide are outside China. Mm, that didn't age well. But for months, Chinese propaganda kept claiming that China saved the world by buying the world time with their responsible actions. Speaking of suppressing info, let's just say China wasn't too forthcoming about its actual case count throughout the pandemic. For about a year, China wasn't reporting any new COVID deaths, which is a little hard to believe considering this is a country of 1.4 billion people. To deal with the spread, China implemented a zero COVID policy. Under zero COVID, no measure was too drastic to get official case counts to zero, including welding people into their homes or shipping people off to quarantine camps, even if they didn't have COVID. But when zero COVID miserably failed and China suddenly opened up last month, apparently without much of a plan, China had no problem sharing its failures with the rest of the world. Leaked government data showed about 17% of the population was COVID positive in December 2022, which to China meant it was the perfect time to ease travel restrictions. Sharing is caring, right? When countries tried to protect themselves again with travel restrictions, China said they were getting political and promised to retaliate. Ah, yes, because only China's allowed to politicize COVID and get away with it. This episode is sponsored by Incogni. Whenever you do anything online or use apps on your phone, there's a huge number of companies that collect your personal data. When I signed up for Incogni in February 2022, I discovered there were dozens of data brokers that potentially had my private information without my permission. Those companies may be using it to sell me stuff or more nefarious things like tracking my movements or stealing my identity. And worse, those companies can be hacked, spreading my private information even more widely. In December, Uber and Uber Eats suffered a new data breach after another one earlier in the year. Now, it might not matter that much if hackers know that I used Uber Eats to order a double plate of nachos with anchovies and sour cream. But it does mean that if a big company like Uber can be hacked, so can all the smaller companies that have my personal data. What's the solution? To get as many companies as possible to delete my data first. That's what Incogni does. Incogni has already gotten my details removed from 86 of these data brokers, with a lot more in progress. And I didn't have to do anything after signing up. Incogni just handles it. 
so I recommend you get Incogni for yourself. Click the link below or go to incogni.com slash uncensored. The first 100 people to use the code uncensored will get 20% off. Get your personal data off the market with Incogni. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.